Our guest is Christos Panagopoulos. He's ambassador of Greece to the United States. He formerly served as ambassador of Greece to the Republic of Serbia and formerly served as ambassador of Greece to the Republic of Cyprus. Mr. Ambassador, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me here. It's a pleasure. Tell me some good news about Greece. I have so many good news lately about Greece. I know that uh, most of your viewers, they have been bombarded with rather negative things. Some of them, uh, uh, they reflect somehow the reality, but uh, I can tell you the reality in Greece is much different. Certainly, we started our recovery through painful measures, reform uh, uh, policies that are not popular, to say the least, but uh, we're obliged to do that. Uh, we do that, uh, and we're building a new country, mm -hmm. which is going to be stronger. Uh, we have to remember always that uh, Greece's success story, all in all, in the neighborhood is the most powerful economically country. Uh, it's an ally of the United States, uh, NATO, and the EU member, and it has a special responsibility to provide stability, peace, and prosperity, if you wish, to the whole region. Mm. So we are hopeful. Uh, the people of Greece, uh, the Greeks, have a reputation. If you look at the history, if you read the history of Greece, and you think of the Persians and Romans and Ottomans, and uh, the people are very resilient, aren't they? How are they coping? That's exactly the word. There uh, have been so many through uh, crises and wars. Mm. Just to remember only the last two world wars, where Greece lost, I mean, uh, uh, so many things. But uh, we made a success out of the catastrophe. We created a new country, a modern, progressive economy. Right now, we are through a difficulty. Mm. We knew we, we have to implement reforms, and that's what we are doing. But uh, all in all, we are very hopeful. We are resilient. We are going to do that uh, no matter what. And the positive results are already in. Uh, in the, uh, I have to tell you that, uh, uh, Dennis, a few uh, days ago, we just completed the last checkup, let's say, of our economy. Uh, you might be aware that there is a troika of uh, the institutions that are lending money to Greece, mm -hmm. which means IMF, the European Commission, the European Central Bank. Mm -hmm. so these three institutions, they conduct a checkup of the Greek economy every three, four months to see how things are going, if they're going to, sp to disperse the next tranche of money to us. So I'm very happy because the latest uh, uh, checkup went all in all very well. Ah. When, when you turn the clock back a, a few years uh, and you look at the, the, the crisis in, in Europe, in Europe, specifically uh, Italy, Spain, Portugal, Ireland, Greece, what, what went down? How did this all happen, just in a layman's uh, uh, definition? In simplifying a very complex problem, yeah. because every country is a different story, of course. But uh, all in all, uh, the common denominator is the introduction of uh, uh, euro, our common currency. That was welcomed as a, uh, as a great thing. It was a great thing. Uh, now, just to keep the proportion, European Union is a success story. I just would like to remind you that only last year, uh, European Union totally won the Nobel Prize. Why? Because we have been successful in creating peace and stability in Europe for since the end of the World War. And that was the meaning of the Nobel Prize, Peace Prize. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, economy was also a success story. But the euro was introduced without taking into account what we're going to do. We didn't build, in other words, the institutions to face a big crisis. When a big crisis came, and I have to say here it was imported. It was not created in Europe per se. My country, for instance, has a sustainable growth for the last uh, decades of 3, 3.5, or even 4%. If you have this growth every year, you can afford to uh, I mean to get some more money, to borrow some more money. But when the crisis comes, then sometimes things are getting out, out of control. That's more or less what happened in, in Greece. So the southern economies, they have been importing more than they have been producing. Mm. They were losing the competitiveness because they had access to easy loans 
with the euro, uh, everyone could afford to finance uh, a house, to buy a new car. Uh, when the crisis uh, broke out, uh, uh, it was the time you should pay all the uh, loans together. And uh, at the same time, the uh, state was expanding. So what we're trying to do that right now is to reform in so many different fronts, uh, just making a smaller but more efficient uh, uh, public sector. Mm. We're doing that very successfully. Do you think that, uh, that uh, these countries and, and Greece, everybody got in over their heads somewhat, or things conspired and all came together at the same time? As I told you, uh, uh, when the crisis came, you know, the domino effect uh, is the nightmare of everyone, mm -hmm. even our friends in the United States. And that's wh why it's relevant to you. I mean, uh, one should ask, why should I care what, uh, what's going on in Greece or in Spain? Uh, because we are living in a global economy. Mm -hmm. Economies that have been exposed to each other. They get benefits, but sometimes when things are going wrong, mm -hmm. they may face uh, dangerous situations. Mm -hmm. So the domino effect is always there. But each country of this you refer to, it's a different story. All in all, we're trying to uh, uh, employ our solidarity, which is a common policy for the European Union, and then make reforms. That's the key issue. Let's take a little break. Uh, we're talking with the ambassador who uh, represents Greece here in the United States. And on the other side, I want to pursue that point with you as to why people should know, why they should care, and this interdependence that we have on each yep. other right now. So Greece is really important to the United States. Sit tight. We'll be back on the other side. This is America and the world. This is America is brought to you by... The National Education Association, the nation's largest advocate for children and public education. The Republic of Kazakhstan in the heart of Eurasia, a rich history, a culture of hospitality, and a future of development and growth. The U.S.-China Education Trust and the F.Y. Chang Foundation. The League of Arab States, representing 350 million people in 22 member countries. The Rotondaro Family Trust. The Embassy Series, uniting people through musical diplomacy, presenting international artists in diplomatic settings. Ambassador, uh, uh, I was at an event at your embassy one evening and you were giving a little talk to some folks. And uh, a question came into my mind when it was time for question. But somebody, somebody jumped the gun and asked it. And uh, it's very simple. There are parallels between what happened in Greece and what has happened in the United States, huh? The, uh, you know, I, I would joke saying that uh, I visit some friends up the Capitol Hill and they tell me half jokingly that don't worry about this. We have the same problem. The only difference is that we can print money. That's exactly <laughs> what I was thinking. Yes. Of course, that's that's not the only difference because the United States they have the credibility that they can attract investors. Mm -hmm. And one of the problems my country is trying to face right now, quite successfully, is to attract new investors. We need more money to expand. The magic word for our economy is growth. Yeah, 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 growth. If we have growth, we can face our debts, we can fulfill our obligations, and then we can be uh, uh, self-sustaining ourselves. Uh, so growth is very important. In order to have growth, you need more money and you need new investors into your economy. The United States, of course, they are very successful because of the credibility you have. Uh, in Greece, we are trying to deal with this issue. So you had to, whereas kiddingly, but truthfully, print, we could print money, but we also could stimulate our economy by putting in a huge shot. And that turned out to be very successful. Uh, you had to go, go outside and borrow the money, huh? We have to borrow the money, and uh, at the same time, we have to make the structure to be more competitive again. Uh -huh. be uh, 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 diminish our public sector, which used to be one of the problems we have, 
In all so what does that mean, diminish the public sector? I mean, uh, the public servants, they have to be less than they used to be, work more efficiently, uh, cutting uh, spend, I mean, uh, from the uh, national budget, all the things together. Too much entitlements, huh? Uh, exactly, yes. So we have to reform the conversation is about us reforming our entitlement system? Same thing over there, huh? This is common. This is common and uh, uh, both economies are doing, we're doing that in our own small scale. Mm -hmm. But again, I have to come back to growth. Uh, we're doing so many things to make uh, uh, Greece uh, more attractive to investors. We have already success stories, uh, different uh, companies big companies from the United States, from all over the world, they come to Greece right now. Who's, in, who's interested in investing? Is it the United States? Is it China? Is China coming? China, as you uh, very appropriately mentioned, is already a success story. The shipping giant of China, Costco, you might be aware of this mm -hmm. great company. What uh, they uh, decided to do is to make uh, the Port of Piraeus, which is strategically located uh, just off Athens, mm -hmm. uh, to be the uh, hub for their business. In other words, they bring all their containers destined to Central Europe uh, to Piraeus, oh. and they spin it over to uh, the Balkans and then to Central Europe. This is a strategic investment. This is a success story already. But even from the United States, we do have uh, major companies like uh, Helen Packard, uh, like Philip Morris, Unilever, uh, all these great companies, they decided that Greece is uh, a, a promising uh, country and they do business there. We have uh, unemployment rate here around 8%. In, uh, in Greece, it's 27%. And amongst young people, it's, it's through the roof. How do you go about, and you've, you've mentioned some th thoughts, this idea of growth is key. How do you, can you create jobs or does it just have to do, the jobs have to come as the economy picks up? We have a special <coughs> programs, uh, very aggressive, if I may say, quote unquote, uh, first of all, for the young kids. You know, uh, I think only in Greece you can find so many young people uh, overqualified having diplomas from first-class universities like Harvard, MIT, mm. or uh, great European uh, institutions of uh, higher education. Right now, they have a difficulty. Like you said, it's a devastating problem because uh, of the high rate of unemployment. We hope this is only temporary. We do our best. For instance, i give you an example. 8% uh, of the total population has been involved in startups the country, the state, uh, gives incentives to young people mainly to start up new jobs so they can create more employment, bring growth to the country. Mm -hmm. uh, we are mainly a service economy. One of the major pillars of our economy, apart from the merchant marine, where we have been successful throughout the centuries, is our tourism. Nobody can beat the Greek climate, uh, mm -hmm. uh, the tradition which uh, is there, you know, the birthplace of democracy, uh, wherever you go, I mean, you find uh, things that you can identify with from the antiquity to today through the Byzantine era and the modern time. And then, of course, right now we have one more reason to expect a very good uh, tourist season because the whole tourist industry is, how you can say that, discounted. I mean, it has more competitive rates. Uh, mm -hmm. The hotels are uh, mm -hmm. bringing up uh, better packages for everyone, so it's even more attractive. We are said to have a record a high, I mean, uh, of uh, 17 million tourists all in all. We're a nation of, uh, hardly speaking, 11 million altogether. Mm -hmm. We expect 17 million tourists this year. Wow. Um, the, uh, you mentioned, uh, uh, I mean, it's the cradle of democracy, of Western civilization, literature, philosophy, uh, science and math uh, principles, uh, theater, uh, drama, comedy. Medicine also. Medicine. Remember the author for Hippocrates? Uh, yes, yes, yes. So uh, we kind of owe our existence to Greece, don't we, in a way? It's very deep in the uh, root of what we call today Western civilization, which is not Western, it's a universal civilization, it's a great civilization. And uh, 
most of the ideas that uh, even today are very relevant to our public life, they have been first uh, introduced in my country. Yeah. And the evolution is a great uh, 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 spiritual pleasure, let's say, to go back to the roots and see how these people uh, two and a half thousand years ago, they have been dealing with these issues which are very relevant to a modern de uh, de uh, democracy, mm -hmm. free speech, uh, uh, respect for individual rights, democracy itself, people to decide, not having someone to impose on them their will. All these things are very re relevant in our society on a different scale, of course, today. The, uh uh, I've been to Athens and a couple of the islands. Uh, talk a little bit about the geography and the topography of the because it's there's so many islands out there, right? It's in numbers it's, in the thousands. It's one of the strong things we have to offer to uh, our, our many uh, guests every year. We have thousands of islands. Uh, it's the mainland, and then we have thousands of islands uh, on the east side of the mainland. Is the Aegean Sea. On the west is the Ionian Sea, and south of us is Crete, which uh, is uh, uh, host to great civilization uh, from the antiquity up to today. So, if you take, for instance, a boat from Athens, every other couple of miles you have a beautiful island, yeah. uh, rich in history, in uh, 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 local things, attractions, even the local cuisine. I mean, is is uh, an attraction by itself, and of course. This is coupled with uh, 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 an unparalleled climate, I mean, uh, around the year. Climate, hospitality, food, uh, all of those uh, play. How many Americans uh, visit every year? Uh, I, I have to tell you that I'm disappointed when I look to the numbers, because yeah. I say to my friends here in the United States, what uh, one neighborhood of Berlin provides uh, when it comes to tourists to come to Greece is the whole total number of Americans. They are no more than 400,000. Uh -huh. So uh, 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 I think we can increase that because it's one of the most friendly mm. countries of the United States. Uh, on the bilateral level right now, I think we pass through the best of the best uh, because we cooperate without any major uh, problem between us. Mm -hmm. Suffice to say that from the rebirth of uh, uh, Greece as state back in 1821, uh, the two countries, they have been inspired by the same principles. They have been side by side on all major uh, calls of history to protect democracy and human rights. Suffice to say that during the last world wars, Greece joined the United States in protecting the same ideas and values. Mm. They have been never opposing each other. This is uh, a matter of history and we uh, cherish that. And on the other hand, every Greek family has a relevant, uh, I mean, a relative right here sure. in the United States. Uh, the Greek-American community is, uh, like I said to President Obama, it's like a living uh, a link between the two countries. Every day, thousands of contacts mm -hmm. bringing together the two nations. Um, you recently met with the President Obama, and then I gather that upcoming uh, Secretary Kerry uh, who I think is doing a terrific job, is going to meet with your foreign minister uh, over in Europe. What's going on behind the scenes? So what can you tell us? I have to tell you that uh, uh, just a few days ago, President Obama uh, opened the White House for the Greek-American community to honor uh, the Greek Independence Day. We have the chance to meet again. Uh, Secretary Kerry and my minister met already. Uh, we're looking forward to these high-level visits to intensify in the future. Uh, most probably we're going to have a, 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 a visit of my Prime Minister at some point in the future here. So all these things, they just show to the public what's going on. Like you said, behind closed doors, we're not doing, I mean, secret diplomacy. <laughs> we're open. We share the same values and uh, we're engaged uh, to fulfill the same agenda in southeastern Europe. Suffice to tell you that Greece is uh, cooperating with the United States to bring prosperity and stability into this region. What, 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 when you look at your uh, uh, foreign policy, what would you say would be the number one and two uh, 
uh, uh, missions that you have? We are in a very turbulent uh, uh, neighborhood, let's say. Uh, suffice to remind uh, uh, your viewers the Arab Spring, which is just south of us, and we have to uh, uh, join forces with our European allies and uh, uh, above all the United States to make their life and their transitional period as uh, quiet as it could be and efficient at the same time. Uh, we do have some uh, 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 problems from the past with uh, our friends uh, 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 in Turkey. The climate is much better right now. We are looking forward to uh, deal with the issues. Uh, among the most important uh, things is the Cyprus issue. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, uh, this occupation of one third of a European country, member of the UN, of course, and the European Union, is still continuing. We hope that uh, uh, our friends in Ankara they will uh, show the political will to uh, solve this issue. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, of course, the Balkans. Uh, you know, I've been ambassador of my country to Serbia. And I was hands-on, I mean, with this turbulent uh, uh, neighborhood in the Balkans. But Greece, as the oldest member of NATO and the European Union in the area, uh, feels that it has an obligation to lead the way for other countries because the common future is within the European Union, the Euro-Atlantic structures, as mm -hmm. we say. And we feel that we should help our neighbors to fulfill their dreams. Um, the, uh, you mentioned, and we've talked a little bit as, as we've wended our way through our conversation about the EU and the European countries, 27 countries in the EU, huh? Absolutely, yes. Uh, right now there are going to be 28 with Croatia, which is going to join in a few months. In a few months? Wow. It's uh, a done deal. It's, it's a ceremonial thing that uh, is pending. And you say it was a good idea. And, 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 and is it a success and will it survive? Uh, so far, you know, it's a very difficult thing. Imagine the United States, if some people are frustrated with the way Congress is working. You know, <laughs> I don't like to <laughs> criticize this, but uh, yeah. uh, some people, they cannot understand that uh, interests are clashing. So imagine to have 27, 28 tomorrow different countries to cooperate. It takes time, but so far, uh, successfully, the European Union has dealt with all the crises. Mm -hmm. It's like a bicycle. You never stop. If you stop, you mm -hmm. fall down. So uh, we believe that uh, we're going to come out of this crisis stronger and more united. Uh, just so uh, I have this in my mind and pass it along to uh, uh, our viewers, the pillars of the uh, economy in, uh, in, in Greece, what would they be? Uh, the shipbuilding, merchant, marine, uh, tourism? It's a, it's a service economy, service? of course, but uh, we, have to, we have some uh, uh, very competitive uh, agricultural Agriculture, products. Agriculture, fishery? Fish? Fishery, yeah. of course. Uh, olive oil is one of the most traditional uh, products. It's very good for all of them. Suffice to connect it with the uh, uh, fashionable Mediterranean diet, which is a oh. way of life in my country. Yes. And it and gives so you, successful. It's very successful because it gives you the full taste of life. And at the same time, it's beneficial for your well-being for years and years. And it's a success story. Uh, probably you are aware of the, with the Greek yogurt, for instance, a delicacy which is uh, good for the everyday diet. Mm -hmm. So we do have an agricultural uh, 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 series of products. Uh, I, wanted, I just want to make sure that I, I, I ask you to talk on this. I know that in the past, um, because of the marathon nightmare in Boston, uh, <clears throat> that you spent time in Boston at uh, the Fletcher School for both international law and international relations, and also headed up the, the you were the dean of the... Uh, the consuls of uh, consuls the New England uh, states. In, in New England states. Uh, so that had a special spot in your heart, I know, huh? Absolutely. I have to tell you that I was personally in touch because when I was there as consul general mm -hmm. in 84, a long time ago, the then Governor Dukakis and myself, we did introduce a special ceremony uh, to award uh, the winners of the male and female, mm. uh, uh, the Boston Marathon, with an olive wreath coming from the very same place of Marathon. Wow. So I stood so many times here at the finish line on Boylston Street, 
it was devastating for me personally mm -hmm. to see this tragedy unfolding in front of my eyes. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, last week, uh, and uh, because I know Bostonians, I'm sure they're going to overcome this and come back stronger. Mm. Mr. Ambassador, we're at the end of our time. Uh, thank you for uh, sharing, uh, educating us about Greece and sharing some good news. We thank you so much. Thank you much. very much. We do expect you in Greece this year. We thank would like to much. come. We would thank like you. to come very much. Thank you so much. For information about my new book, The Chance of a Lifetime, an online video for all This Is America programs, visit our website, thisisamerica.net. And now you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter. This is America is brought to you by the National Education Association, the nation's largest advocate for children and public education. The Republic of Kazakhstan in the heart of Eurasia, a rich history, a culture of hospitality, and a future of development and growth. The U.S.-China Education Trust and the F.Y. Chang Foundation. The League of Arab States, representing 350 million people in 22 member countries. The Rotondaro Family Trust. The Embassy Series, uniting people through musical diplomacy, presenting international artists in diplomatic settings.